Hello and welcome to AutoInform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey. In this toolbox feature, I'd like to present battery condition testing. Now, traditionally, battery testing has gone through an evolution like most things on the vehicle. And the main reason for that is, once again, the evolution of the design of various components. The battery now must be considered as a unique design part of the overall vehicle electronic system and not simply as a storage device for electrical energy. In the early days, and this is still now a valid way of testing batteries, it was possible to use a hydrometer whereby the specific gravity of each individual cell could be measured. It's a very accurate means of establishing the state of charge of the battery. However, Development is such that we now have what we call an enclosed or sealed cell. We cannot access the actual electrolyte in individual cells. Quite often, and this battery is no exception, do have a window that gives an indication of the specific gravity by means of literally coloured balls which float within the electrolyte. I don't trust them. It doesn't accurately indicate the condition of each individual cell. That's one method of testing, very accurate, now no longer possible to be achieved. The next method of testing, once again traditional, was the high rate discharge tester. This in effect applies a manual load across the battery and can be timed, once again, manually by the triggering of a switch, whereby the condition or response of the voltage performance can be monitored. This also is not an accurate means of testing, but I'd like to demonstrate it first of all. It does provide a load across the battery, which is good. It doesn't, however, determine the load against battery specification. And we could have a situation where there is a surface charge on the cell, so it's not definitive. Connect across the battery, trigger. Now we can see a static voltage in the green zone. It's indicating around just over 12 and a half volts. It's not too bad. It should be a little bit higher, but it's not too bad. When I trigger and apply a load, you can see the voltage has dropped and it should hold within the green zone. And if you take a look at the back, you can see there's quite an extensive load across that battery. Not definitive. It would, however, be useful for removing surface charge off the battery. So as a tool, it does have still an important feature in part of the evaluation process. But as a definitive test for battery condition, no. There are two types of battery. There is a leisure battery, which provides a lower amount of current over a longer period. Leisure batteries are fitted to boats, mobile homes, etc. Their performance is such that they can be discharged from 100% down to 10% and recharged successfully without damage or deterioration of the internal cell condition. They have a thicker cell and release their energy more slowly. I often have open cell, so you can actually use a hydrometer in most cases on leisure batteries. This battery is a traction battery. The traction battery is designed to provide a high output over a short period of time for the engagement of the starter motor. They have smaller, thinner cell construction and therefore are more susceptible to damage if not charged correctly and must operate between 100% and say 75% of fully charged condition. If they become discharged repeatedly and often below 75% then the cells will become sulfated. The sulfur from the electrolyte attaches to the cell and that sulfation will prevent correct charging and full charging unless a, 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 a special deep cycle charge process is gone through. We'll come back to that later. So we have a problem now with the traction battery. We need to be able to test it accurately for its internal condition. Specific gravity would work, but it's sealed. A timed discharge test is the ultimate test where a load across the battery can be applied across a timed discharge. That's difficult to achieve and doesn't really fall within the remit of this device because there's no known load. 
That leaves us with conductance testing. Conductance testing mimics the performance of a time discharge test, but applies a non-intrusive test process. The conductance tester, which is this particular instrument, applies a small current across the cells of the battery. Obviously, the cells are tied. They're connected together internally. And the current is about an amp and a quarter. It's a digital current. In other words, it's switched on and off. And the application of that current then is, or the return of that current is then monitored by the instrument. And the condition, the physical condition of the cells is then determined. Don't confuse a health check with state of charge. The health check determines the physical condition of the battery, which is vital before considering whether to recharge it or not. If the health condition is poor or has failed, you're wasting your time charging it. If the health condition is good and it's a fully discharged battery, then by going through an antisulfation program and correctly charging the cell, we'll then recover that battery to full and correct normal use. So, connection is quite simple. A lead to each of the battery posts. What we now have to do is basically determine what type of battery we're testing. I'm going to choose an out of vehicle test cycle because I'm not going to go through the charge, um, the cranking and charge phase. This is a health condition check that I'm demonstrating. I'm now going to choose what type of battery, whether it's a regular AGM or a gel battery. This is a regular uh, calcium battery. And I now have to select what type of battery the rating is. Now, there should be a rating label on the battery. It's very important. Without that rating, you can't accurately establish what specification the battery is. That's very, very important. We have EN, IEC, SAE, DIN, JIS. This one happens to be a DIN rating battery, so I'm going to select the DIN as the scaling. I now have to establish what the battery is rated at, which is a 330 amp battery. So I now need to navigate down to 330. And the purpose of this is that now the performance of this battery is going to be compared with the specification I've entered in the tool. So the next depression of the button is now going to send about an amp and a quarter through this circuit, which is then monitored by the device. That's the connectivity and the, the health check of the cells. That test is now being conducted. So these are the results of the test. We've got a state of charge showing around about 75%. We have a measured performance of 387 amps against the 330 on the label. So the battery is performing a higher specification than the actual rating. So it's an excellent battery with a charge of well above 70%, probably around 75%. So that is a thorough health check. Don't confuse the state of health with the state of charge. We can have a healthy battery in a discharged condition. We can have an unhealthy battery in a fully charged condition. It's very important that the state of health comes as the primary check. That concludes the testing of the internal condition of a calcium battery. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, please visit the AutoInform website for details of our face-to-face -face training, DVDs and learning modules. We're also able to supply a range of tools for that purpose. Thank you for joining me in this feature. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.